Hey guys, welcome to MetaSounds 101 Part 5. In this video, we're going to finish talking about some of the triggers uh, that are available to you in MetaSounds. So let's jump right in. So we're here in our last project. If uh, you're just now joining us, I would go check out Part 1, 2, 3, and 4 to get you caught up to speed. Uh, but there's a couple more triggers I want to talk about here. Uh, the first trigger I want to talk about is the trigger any. This is a killer node, and you can see you can select up to eight. So let's just do four. So basically, this is a real simple trigger, but it's very, very powerful. What this does is this allows you basically to take a combination of triggers from anywhere. Could be here. Uh, we could have another input variable, and we could just call this something random, something else random happening and you could do you know something else too but the bottom line is this what this does is this takes any of these triggers and it causes it to do this thing so maybe you have a trigger box over here a trigger box over here a trigger box over here different parts of your game but you want them all to do the same thing you want them all to trigger the same sound so anytime any of your characters enters into any of those spots it's going to trigger the same result so it's you know very simple we're doing that but we could also if the meta sound was playing we could also trigger this and that would also do that so really simple concept but it's nice to know that you have access to that and that might be in a musical perspective you may say anytime a snare drum triggers i want to trigger this riser or anytime a hi-hat triggers I want to trigger this kick also so there's a lot of musical things you can do with that as well the next trigger I want to talk about is the trigger accumulate this is kind of nice especially when it comes to making uh, procedural or generative music because you know one of the tricks with making music random is if you make it too random it will sound extremely random if you make it too uh, sequential then it will sound boring somewhere in between there is a sort of amount of randomness that feels good so maybe we know like we don't want it to be total random because we don't want the song to start on the bridge but maybe we want that first part to play at least four times before it starts doing let's say the melody for example maybe we want this loop to play at least four times before any melodies start getting generated this is where the trigger accumulate comes in really handy because what this does is this tells you that over here on the left these four things need to all happen before I do this so in this example I'll start the meta sound which triggered this first one but still nothing but now when this happens nothing happens because we have four inputs so let's go input four calling that input two and then we'll call this input three now I'll start the sound nothing trigger this nothing trigger this nothing now when I trigger this boom this trigger is released and it's good to go great example of this like I said melody maybe you want maybe you want to change a melody from a major scale to a Lydian scale but you only want to happen you only want it to happen after at least the major melody has played five times. So then you could keep track of that. After the fifth time that this array plays, then I want you to switch to this array. And maybe that array is a Lydian array or something like that. So you can see where this, this starts to really give you some freedom and flexibility and kind of controlling the randomness of what happens musically. Or maybe there's a set of percussion loops that you don't ever want them to play unless these other eight things have happened. And so that's a great uh, musical way to use a trigger accumulate node. So I wanna talk about the trigger select node. What the trigger select node does is, as you can see here in my sound, I've got this wave player uh, getting a, a wave from an array. And this array has two sounds in it. It has a snare, it has a kick drum. And right now I'm telling this get wave asset to get index one which is the kick drum. So when I play this, it's going to come out of this one, zero, and it's gonna play this sound, which is a kick. Now, if I change this index to zero, it's gonna call 
the zero index, which is the snare. So now when I play that, it's going to always trigger the snare. Now, if I come out of output one and play it, you're not going to hear anything because output one is index one. So when I play this, now I'm sending this trigger out of this output and then that is triggering this node. So if I change this to two, I'm telling this trigger to send out output two. Output two is not connected, so I have to connect it. Now this is gonna go to there. Now if you'll notice, you cannot connect the same thing to uh, multiple outputs. Where this comes in handy is you could have this. So let's say this is generating three kick drums and then this one is generating three snare drums. You could have this triggering this and then you could have this index getting a random number. So every time this triggers, this index number could change. So maybe the first time it comes out of here, the second time it comes out of here based on this number. So you see here the output index to trigger. So if you have, if you want it to come out three, you would put three. And then that sound would come out of three. So what you need to know is you can see kind of all the possibilities. You could have this set up to trigger four different things, but what it's triggering here is a random integer. And this random integer could be set from zero to three, zero, one, two, three, four, zero to four. So then what happens with this is every time this is triggered, this index number is changing. And then it's randomly sending things out there it goes that finally sent it out number three so you can see here also where you're just again increasing the random probability of things happening yet within a structure of control so maybe you wanted a, a big military type snare drum to start sampling but you only want to do that at a certain time so maybe you change that index at that time and then the snare drum is now replaced with a different sounding snare drum. So lots of cool things you can do with the, the trigger select node. The last node we're gonna talk about is the good old faithful trigger route node. And this one's pretty self-explanatory, but it's just a way to route. And you can route different things. You can route audio, you can route time, which is kinda cool. You can route integers and you can route floats. So let's say two floats, for example. So what we can do here is this first trigger causes this trigger to output this value. The second trigger causes this trigger to output this value. So maybe you could do this in gain. You notice over here on the mixer, you've got gain here. So you could pull this out to the gain and then we could use this to move that out of the way could use this to control volume so maybe on play the first time you want to set the volume to one and then that what that does is that will set the volume of the trigger to one maybe you want to set it to zero which that would do is basically turn it off we are here though we are not in the first one so boom you just set that gain value to zero now if you want to set it to one you can do it here and that's literally changing the volume you could also make this a uh, variable and you could change it in real time or an input change it in real time so if you were doing that you could bring that down i don't know let's say a little less than half so now you've got a volume control sending out this trigger so the trigger route can be used obviously for many more things than just gain, but anything that's a float, anything that accepts a number, anything that accepts audio, you can use these triggers to route out different things. So maybe maybe during one section of the song you wanted to trigger, let's say you had a loop 
and at the end of this loop you want to trigger the melody to zero so you don't hear the melody but it's still playing and then when that loops over it triggers it back on to a full volume and so there's a, again a lot of ways to route and use these random things so there's a lot of power in the triggers D just the triggers so we're in meta sounds and all we've covered is triggers and you can already see all of this possibility you can get as a composer, as a music arranger, as a video game sound designer, uh, a way to randomize and craft the story just with variables and inputs and, and trigger nodes. In our next videos, we're gonna start covering some more advanced topics, so we'll hope you check that out. Remember to like and subscribe, that would be awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.